Good afternoon. Welcome to the last session before lunch. This is Christoph Berg's talk on the future of the NM process. Thanks, Nancy, for the introduction. Actually, it will, will be a discussion round. So I thought originally it would be a much smaller forum. So um, I haven't prepared much slides. I just um, put, uh, took the uh, mail I sent to uh, Debian Project and Debian Newmain some days ago. Some of you might have already uh, read it and uh, put it into some s slides. So that's why the first uh, slide is that disclaimer, it's only meant to be proposal, so nothing has been said yet. And uh, credits for that proposal ga go to Anthony Towns, uh, who made um, in his blog a proposal that I'm going to extend here, and Mark Rockchild, with whom I've been discussing this um, um, recently. So the, the aim here is to get uh, input, feedback, and finally um, to get this eventually or something else uh, implemented or maybe something else. So it should, if it turns out that our ideas here do not fit in the current scheme or there's something that's uh, much better. So um, the current process works like um, a prospective new developer, maintainer, uh, creates a package, gets a sponsor to, to upload it, then works it on the package for a bit. Um, hopefully with some bug fixing new upstream packages, uh, versions and so on. So there's um, work done on the, on the package. Then he gets an existing developer to advocate his application. Then he applies for the new maintainer process, waits for an application manager. This um, last time I checked, that step took f about seven months. I think we're down a bit at the moment. Um, then there's the NM process, which can take anything between some days and several months or even years, depending on how fast the, the mail exchange is, how fast the AM is, how fast the new maintainer is, and so on and then wait for the Debian account manager to create the account. The last step used to be also some real big delay in the past, but this has been uh, reduced greatly a lot, and the queue has been even down to zero just before DebConf. So there are quite some problems with that uh, approach. At, in the meantime, so I've met, been mentioning something, uh, some before, um, the uh, people who apply are frustrated because their application managers are unresponsive. Unre they have to wait at several uh, stages and finally they might even have a wrong impression on how long this is going to take. So they m might think they, if they apply now they can rush through immediately, but that's not really uh, the case. On the other hand, we have uh, haven't had enough application managers, which is um, maybe also the case bec uh, because the whole process takes too long, so application managers get exhausted, get bored, or whatever. And finally, it's uh, the current sc scheme is a bit boring for either side. The, the templates have to be filled out and, uh, and so on. It's, uh, some people have fun answering this quiz question, some, some don't. Um, we've been discussing um, or talking about AM stuff this morning, um, so we now have a, maybe a, better, a better idea of how the templates are actually supposed to work. So um, we will not talk that much about um, that here, but um, more on the next slide. Uh, by the way, how many application managers are here? So about, let's say, 10 or so um, people in the new maintainer process. People who have completed it recently. Okay, two. And people who are not applying because they think it takes all too much time or something like that. <laughs> two. Okay, so three. Um, okay, so... Um, the idea is to um, make the process um, a bit 
uh, to introduce an intermediate step in, to, in the new maintainer process, which uh, is called Debian maintainer. The term is uh, due to Anthony. And the idea is to let the maintainer of that package uh, upload the package himself after some initial time of sponsoring. And then um, when, he, uh, when they get a bit more experience with that, uh, may proceed to uh, becoming a full Debian de developer. So this is not meant to reduce the, the amount of people becoming a developer, but only to ease the process a bit. So um, what I'm proposing is the, the initial phase works li just like before. Uh, you cre create a pa package, get it sponsored, then um, you contribute to Debian in various ways. Um, you work on the package, do bug fixing, um, whatever. Then you might get a second package, do other contribution and um, whatever contribution you can think of. And then finally, after um, a minimum amount of three months, um, you can apply for the new uh, Debian maintainer uh, step in between. The uh, idea why we are introducing uh, a minimum time here is that we have the impression that way too many applicants apply way too early and are not yet ready for the process, which uh, makes it quite tedious to, uh, for the application manager to go with them through the process because they have to, uh, the applicant has to look up everything, get the answers wrong in the, uh, in the first try, the application manager has to nitpick in all sorts of answers, and this is not fun for either side. Um, the things I put in italic here are those where, where I think need really discussion, but of course, as I said at the beginning, we can discuss the whole thing and do something entirely else. So, um, as before, you get an advocate, apply for Debian maintainer, then you get an uh, application manager assigned, uh, which is hopefully much faster than before. Um, then there's the DM process, which looks like a very light version of the previous new maintainer process. So there's an ID check uh, as before, so we know that uh, who you are when you are uploading packages. And there, um, then there should be some really, really stripped down version of the NM templates or whatever scheme the A AM wants to, to use which just contains the things you really need to know to work on a single package. Then, uh, when this is finished, you can use your GPG key to, op this, uh, to upload this very package. Um, there's no account yet, no Debian org account yet, so it's pretty much similar to the, the sponsoring scheme before, except that you can upload yourself. And every upload which would go to the new queue would uh, needs another sponsoring upload. So this is so name bumps, uh, other packages and whatever. Okay, the next step is then uh, more contribution. Again, for a minimum of three months to have people a bit more skilled. Of course, time is not the only factor that into, um, influences that. And then um, in the second step, which uh, actually looks like the, what we have now. So there's an, uh, another um, application um, application manager and then there's the, the DD process as before and then you get to be, become a Debian developer. So there are some random notes on that. I'm going to just to skip that now. Um, some things I've been thinking on. There was um, a big discussion in I think April it was when Mark posted is his um, new maintainer process thoughts on project, I think it, the was. Um, there were some proposals to call developer something else uh, and so on. I don't think we can uh, reasonably change developer to, to be something else. So we just keep that. And I like the term Debian maintainer very much because it uh, just says what people are doing. They are maintaining packages. Maintainer is a familiar word in the Debian context and it just sounds all nice. Um, there was some cont um, proposal naming it cont contributor, but I don't really like that. Um, 
Monty? Yeah, okay. Hi, I'm, I'm Madzak, and I wonder what we're going to do with translators, etc. People that contribute but aren't actually maintaining. Uh, okay, um, the question is, uh, which types of Debian developers do we want to have? At the moment, we have um, packagers, and you can use the documentation track to apply for NM. There have been a few people who went through that, um, some of them ended up uh, releasing Edge. <laughs> and um, I think the discussion which, whether we want to have translators, artists, lawyers, and so on, uh, as Debian developers is uh, different from that one here. That's a, that's a different discussion we should have at some point, but that's not what we want to cover here. Nettie? Yep, I'm relaying something from IRC from Bas Sutikar. He says, um, this proposal seems to rely on the idea that magically there are going to appear more AMs. However, these AMs also need to do more work. If I understand it correctly, so it doesn't seem likely more AMs will step forward. Could you comment on that? Um, yes, uh, as said in the beginning, I think, uh, in my opinion, the current process um, is bad because there are too many bored of the whole thing. And if we ha have an intermediate step, which is easier to, to get to, um, people will um, be more skilled when they apply for the full Debian developership. So uh, it will be more fun for the application managers to work with them. And on the other hand, um, we don't uh, intend to uh, people to, to stay in the Debian maintainer stage, but of course they can. So I can imagine that maybe half, I don't know, fourth or three quarters or whatever, whatever of all people um, won't proceed to the full Debian developership and then there will be less applicants. So again, that is not, not the intention to have less Debian developers, but I think there will be more successful applications which will um, make f uh, working as a, an application manager more fun. Well, a bit uh, like adding to what you just commented, to what uh, Maddox uh, said and uh, Simmer, I think that uh, we should, uh, I mean, if we go this way, we should integrate uh, all these, uh, well, Finally, it's an euphemism, we, or, or search for a better word. We don't really have uh, people who are not uh, maintainers uh, being developers in Debian. So I do think that uh, on one hand, this uh, like intermediate step will make the process shorter, or maybe two processes which uh, change together will be a bit lar longer, but uh, people will be happier. Yeah. Uh, but it also opens the door for having uh, the other roles recognized officially, and it will be it will really allow people to to officially join the project doing something else than coding. So I think uh, your proposal, having it, it together with parallel proposals for the different roles that uh, a Debian person, maybe the term will not be Debian developer anymore, a, a Debian official member will do. A, 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 is, is bound for success. But uh, if we take into, a, uh, into the project the other tasks. I am Guillaume. I agree with. I agree with Gunnar on this completely, and I think that Debian is in a problem problematic position where it. Uh, focuses too much on technical people and uh, forgets about the community part where um, the community needs to have a balance between technical and less technical, more social oriented people. We must not forget that community is a social thing, not necessarily a te technical one. And um, by creating a monoculture of technical people, we run into more problems, um, yeah. And I agree with this Debian person, whatever concept that Gunnar suggests. 
Okay, um, about the, as, uh, the first point on that slide here is that I think it, we will have to, we will keep the term Debian developer for all Debian persons, be they lawyers or, or artists or whatever, just b because it worked. Um, I don't think that this proposal is meant to get, uh, to enable other tracks to get into Debian. It, it's just meant to, um, because we have uh, the, the the vast amount of people applying for NM at the moment are packages, and we have a problem w with that getting them through in the in a time that doesn't suck. So we have to do something that uh, there. What what I'm going to do here? Um, well, two things. We are changing a couple of things for internationalization. So. We are adding, France give the idea, and others talk, we are adding the concept of translation ownership. So it would be easy to treat the translator as a developer because he would take care of some translations. So it's not that different anymore. So if you have significant translations inside the project, we will, we will, be, able, we will, we will be able to track this and so it's almost the same track of, of developer for translations and probably for documentation also. And the other thing is today in the morning, we speak with the Gentoo developer that is attending the conference and we are talking with him about how is the process to get to become Gentoo developer. And they use a mentor kind of approach. You have to be in contributing for at least six months and I'm not sure about every, every detail but you have to be in contributing for six months, then somebody start to taking care of you and volunteer to be your mentor inside of the, the process and takes res responsibility for everything that you do. And after that, eventually you became akin to developer with less res responsibility but vote rights. And after that, uh, you can apply, but with very deeply technical tests. And it looks like similar what we are doing now, like adding uh, a middle stage. And it, that's one of the things that I at least would like to discuss about changing. I, I saw a couple of ideas about changing the application manager for mentorship. So it's one of the things that I would like to comment from people that are applicant managers or something like that. If you think that could work better or worse, or if, if, if what depends depends on the new maintainer process or on the, on the applicants or something like that. One thing that was clear from the discussion, the discussion this morning was that the, the application manager is really free to do whatever he wants with the, the applicant. So most are using the templates as we know it at the moment, but um, if the application manager wants to do a mentoring scheme um, or whatever, that's perfectly fine. We, um, the, the Debian account manager even said that he's fine with an applicant that didn't do anything in the process well, the uh, applicant just, uh, the application manager just uh, provided enough pointers to mailing list postings, bug reports, and so on, which uh, is based on previous work by the applicant. So, um, kind of that scheme here is a bit of uh, orthogonal to um, how the actual uh, application is done in the end. I don't know who was first, Franz. Um, we had an interesting discussion, uh, I think, yesterday that we may even have to reduce the size of Debian in some respects because there is a lot of technical discussions uh, or, or the, the project is kind of lacking direction sometimes. And it would maybe be easier, easier to uh, make decisions after, as a project if some decisions would be taken by less people. Uh, so you could think of going to a Debian core developer uh, and having the larger body of people that are really only interested in maintaining one package or translations or documentation around that. Um, that's an, uh, <laughs> yet another different uh, issue. Um, I personally don't want to, to reduce the number of Debian developers at, at the moment or reduce the number of people successfully applying. Um, 
maybe it will turn out that, uh, let's say, 50% of all people applying at the moment are just happy with uploading their own package. They can pre do pretty much everything with, the, um, with it they want then, if they can upload it. So um, maybe it will turn out that we get some kind of um, meter um, developer around there, but that's not the intention of that scheme here. Uh, on the other hand, I don't think that Debian is actually too, that big, uh, too big at the moment. Um, there are lots of discussions on devil or whatever that end in nothing because no one steps forwards and implements stuff. So I, I think if you yeah. just go ahead and do stuff, um, you can get your solution. Uh, Enrico? Um, although this prompts the, the idea that it should be kind of easier to get into, but it should also be kind of easier to get out of Debian. I wouldn't mind if we started coming out with a process in which packages which are effectively not maintained get orphaned, and people who are actually doing nothing stop being Debian developers. And it's not a bad thing if it's easy to go back. Um, <coughs> if someone hasn't been doing anything in Debian for three years, then probably uh, that, that's, that doesn't count as a Debian developer anymore, but once this person wants to come back, maybe a little bit briefing of what changed, then person's back in. We have emeritus stuff, which kind of works, uh, w which was to, to a bit of a reply to, to France. What I wanted to say about your process is got, it's got a couple of things I don't like. One is it's 12 points, and that is more than seven plus minus two. No, it's two times six. Yeah, that's twice as much as it should be. Lo which means, I mean, it's it's hard to remember all the points uh, because it's more than seven plus minus two, obviously. Uh, which means it's uh, it's too bureaucratic. Uh, um, well, I, if it it's too hard to even remember what the points are, it sounds like too complicated. Which for something which is getting accepted into Debian, if you are too complicated to begin with, then then you end up in in an exaggerated amount of trouble when you actually deploy, when you get to the corner cases. Um, and that, that's what scares me the most, the most. And the second thing that quite scares me is if it's too easy to get upload privileges, I see like a mass of Ubuntu, Motu people started uploading stuff in Debian, which wouldn't be maybe a bad thing, but when installing packages, I may want to have a choice if I really want to install packages from people who haven't read the policy very well and that sort of things. So I, I'm kind of scared at the idea of what kind of packages would I find in my aptitude list if I uh, opened, like, if I made it too easy to put packages in. Yeah, yeah right. That's uh, one of the concerns I also have here. Um, to comment on the complex, complexity thing, I don't think it's uh, too complicated. It's just two times what we have now, and um, the step, this is step zero, step one, and two just look the same. It's just uh, the slide looks similar because I was too lazy to uh, too lazy to format it. Um, the idea is that there is some uh, really visible amount of package that is. Uh, has been done on the, uh, in the BTS, uploading the package and so on, before the people get to to up really uh, to get the upload rights. So it's just like you have been your sponsor and you have been sponsoring uh, that guy for some time, and he did three or four or whatever uploads, and it all works fine, and you expect the next one to be the same. So why should the sponsor still be bothered with that? Um, um, Jörg? I will. I have one little comment to Enrico right now. If you are going out of the project, leaving this uh, defined procedure by mailing the que queuing admins and mailing Debian private, there's an easier way to get back in if you are outside for a long time. We have defined uh, some templates for the Emeritus developer which have less than half the questions of the other stuff just to ensure they are up to date with what's happening in Debian. So it's not that hard to get back in Debian if you really want to. I was wondering, 
if um, there was any research being done on the normal or average behavior model uh, or be way of behavior of uh, uploaders. I guess there are very different um, people around, people who fix bugs, lots of bugs, and do NMUs, people who um, do group maintainership, and pe uh, perhaps others who only care about their single um, MP3 player or so. Has anyone um, done this research, and what was the result? How are these distributions? And which answer do you, uh, which question do you want to answer in, with that proposal? No, I, I, w I wonder about what kind of persons do we have as DB developers? Um, if if um, you pr propose to have this Debian uploader, or I'm a f I forgot the name. Um, maintainer. Debian maintainer. maintainer. Um, how many Debian maintainers do we have already? I can't say anything about the, the numbers, but from what I've seen browsing the, the archive, it's maybe half of the, the maintainers that only have very, very few packages that get uh, two uploads a year or something like that. So, others want to co comment on that? Rafael, Rafael has a question for some time now. Thank you. I just wanted to reply to Enrico as well uh, uh, concerning the Ubuntu Moto stuff. I mean, if we introduce this intermediary level uh, Debian maintainer, it's only to give rights to people who have been sponsored like usual. It means people who do good work and which, uh, who have package which are policy compliant. So I don't see any problem here. And if over time problem appears, I mean, bugs and RC bugs will be tracked like usual and uh, they will be fixed. If they don't get fixed by the maintainers themselves, then we remove the package again. And I mean, it's just the normal way we're working. Not quite. The reason I mentioned Motu is because I have been visible for a while in the Ubuntu, Itali in the Ubuntu community and uh, I regularly get requests from Motu people who would like to upload stuff in Debian because it's kind of cooler. And uh, so that kind of scares me a bit. So I tell them that like, uh, well, yeah, it's nice you're a Motu, it's really good what you do, but well, there's lots of like policy stuff like in Debian you have to follow and you should most than ever you should have a goal for yourself for being a Debian developer, not just look cool. Uh, but it, it's usually like half an hour long talks trying to work out what's their real motivation and not just, you know, you were Ubuntu user, you became Ubuntu Moto, it's cooler. You want to become a Debian developer, it's even cooler. And that's just not like what it works. That leads to lots of frustration. And since I see there's a request, then that kind of scares me a bit to make, well, to open too many doors at the at moment. At least Debian is the, the cooler distribution. <laughs> it is. Um, th that's why we want to ensure that there's uh, a visible amount of work done in Debian before they can apply. Though. So this is the biggest open question um, so far. So Manoj has, has had a question I for some time. I have a comment and a rather somewhat inflammatory question. I'll go with the question first. What are our goals? Do we want to be a social club, or are we trying to improve, to produce the best distribution of Linux ever? If we are trying to be a social club, then yes, we should lower the standards and the lower the barriers of entry. We all, has anybody asked the release team about what they feel about a whole bunch of not quite experienced people directly uploading? Raphael mentioned that we can just fix RC bugs. Anybody has a, had a look at the RC bug count recently? Are we sure we want to be lowering uh, the, what it takes to get a package into Debian without anybody looking over your package? Um, my comment, which is not so inflammatory, was about uh, people who have gone away, who are missing. It's simple security, you know, principle of least privilege. 
the, if they have not uploaded packages in 12 months, they don't need the privilege of uploading packages. And that privilege should be removed until they ask for it again. It can be just a simple matter of saying, okay, I'm ready to upload again, give me my privilege back. So in, in my opinion, we are still a technical project. So we don't need uh, everyone who contributes socially on uh, IRC to be a developer. Um, I see a reason for uh, acknowledge others to uh, be a member of the project, but as said, at, at the moment we are talking about the, the technical side of um, the project. We, we have packages, distributions, and so on, and uh, have want the people that do want to take care of that to get in less painfully. Franz? I tend to agree with uh, Enrico's and, and also Manos's concerns. And one solution could maybe be that packages uploaded by people like that stay in unstable until they become DD or unless a Debian developer is willing to accept responsibility for those packages by, by being uh, an uploader for that package. So um, then this won't change anything. So um, what you're proposing is just the sponsoring scheme we have now. So the intermediate step here, uh, what the, the proposal doesn't uh, have, uh, is a no op. They could still upload themselves. Well, well but uh, why should they upload packages that are not uh, released? They will not be developers, so we end up with a lot of unmaintained packages, it's stable. Um, the idea is not that they are not uh, maintaining it anymore. Okay, the, the, the um, question or the answer for Francois was what uh, happens with if those people do not uh, proceed to become a developer and we have lots of packages in stable by those people if they are they not going to be maintained anymore? So uh, I don't think that's a point. Um, I do see the point that um, we have people uploading there that have not gone through full NM yet, but uh, on the other hand, we have at, at the moment we trust every uh, developer to handle his packages correctly, and uh, no one takes care of that anymore. So it's pretty much the same. So there are a couple of questions on the other side of the audience. Okay, it's open. Okay, uh, being that I have the microphone, I have the next word. Uh, well, this is a very hard uh, point to address, I think, and that's the reason everybody's jumping on it. I am of the opinion that this first step, well, for current NM, we have to go through uh, the technical part and through the social part. And I think, well, yes, we have to focus on technical quality. Our distribution is widely known as the as the most perfect one, as the most uh, uh, carefully prepared one. So maybe the, the answer will be, okay, if we are allowing uh, people to contribute directly to, the, to Debian before being completely committed and completely tested to it, maybe the first step should be the technical one. In the end, uh, we will not allow, for example, for a Debian maintainer to upload the new packages without being sponsored. That rules out problems with licenses unless the license uh, changes uh, halfway through the process. Yes, we're not allowing them to do NMUs. Uh, we're not allowing uh, many things, yes. So I think we, we could implement something like this, focusing first on technical abilities. And again, I take again this uh, idea of, uh, of uh, putting many parallel processes uh, for the different kinds of contributions. But for maintainers, we will focus first on the technical things. And then for people who want to be a developer and want to vote, they will 
have to go th also through the DS the, the uh, guidelines. I mean, I <laughs> spelling in English is terrible. Uh, well, yeah, if, if I really quick point to. A So if I could raise a really quick point about the sponsorship thing. If you are sponsoring a package in Debian, that means that you personally are responsible for the content of the package. The person who actually prepared the package, it's great if they fix RC bugs. It's great if they keep track of the package and stable. It's great if they help uh, as a real Debian maintainer should. But when you sign that upload and you make that upload, you're saying that you are personally responsible for the contents of that package. If that Debian maintainer, or if that person who's not yet a Debian developer falls off the face of the planet, you're responsible for that package. If you don't want to be responsible, you don't sponsor it. Um, and so, I mean, that's one of the things that sponsors, maybe we need to improve the process for sponsoring so that people who are sponsoring packages understand what that means. But that's really what it means to sponsor a package. Um, Manoj earlier on said that, or asked the question whether we are a social club or whether we are producing the best operating system. And I would say we should do both because the social club that we are, I mean, look at us, we're partying every day here at DebConf. And I think it doesn't necessarily decrease our productivity. I think, as a matter of fact, in the long term, it really adds to the project and enables us to do a lot more. I see you shaking your head right now, Manoj, but that, that's my opinion. I do at this. I realize we have a little time left, but I quickly want to throw out another thought um, about how Debian keeps increasing and increasing. And this is, you know, don't comment on it. It has nothing to do with this talk. But there's also some security issues to me involved with the fact that we have 1,000 maintainers currently that have write access to the archive. We keep adding more and more, but we're not really dealing with these security implications that, as a matter of fact, introducing Trojans is going to be really easy. Just think about that and talk to me if you want to. Okay, I would uh, like to add a remark. I um, agree with Madoc and uh, Manoj said we had about a thousand RC bugs, that's true. But how many bugs of are due to people who are not Debian developers? I mean, if we have a thousand bugs, it's because we have many Debian developers who suck doing their work. And uh, having more Debian maintainers w will not uh, increase the percentage of person who suck at their work. So what we have to do is fix our process so that we manage them, but n I don't think it's right to point the Debian maintainer or new maintainer process as uh, guilty of this problem. And a, and a, a second remark I would like to, to share is that I know someone who is a tech expert and uh, he would really like to manage some tech package in, within Debian, but he was really scared with the full uh, Debian developership. He would be perfectly happy with this Debian maintainer process. He would have like three tech packages that no one else wants that are currently orphaned and that would get r removed in a few months. They would take care of them without any problem. So I do think it's a good thing to introduce this level of Debian maintainership. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I also share the view that at the moment a sponsor should be responsible for the package they're sponsoring. Can you say why, well, can you say, can you give some concrete examples of checks that you think we need to perform for a Debian developer, but not for some, a Debian maintainer who can, uh, up, or who can upload directly, and why we don't need to do those checks? Um, as Kuna said, the, the whole DFSG stuff could be skipped because uh, they are not allowed to allow new, uh, well, upload you can new change packages the and so. Of package. Come on. Sorry? You can change the contents of packages are not static. Uh, yes, but, um, well, you have to cut it at, at some point. And how often does that ha happen? Quite often, um, packages, for example, link, um, add some other bit of software under a different license. It may be incorrect, maybe an invalid combination of licenses some documentation under a non-free license, so on? Well, but that would be the responsibility of the... Is it, is it Sorry? Uh, that would be the responsibility of the... to check the sponsor that from the beginning. Of course, if the, the contents change... But they can now upload directly, so how does... Yeah, but, okay, the... Uh, I think that the, the case that the content or the license of the package actually changes is... Uh, doesn't have, uh, happen that often. So, 
Okay, so if we agree that it's a problem, we have to discuss it here. So, but uh, time is running out quickly. I so have one make a point. two things that I will, as a proposal, propose. I will propose two things. One is that you should probably have a role that is called Debian community member, <clears throat> kind of person that are not developer, but are making rollouts, installations, helping people using the system. This is just a thing I will uh, propose, okay? The other thing is that in, uh, in Debian ADU, we have a lot of people committing a lot of things to our own repository, and we use the Debian developer to do quality insurance if you're gonna have some packages, new things uploaded, and or improving something. So we have 50 people contributing with just five Debian developers that really doing the, uh, as I see it, the quality insurance and have a standard to rise to. So this shouldn't be a ni uh, negative thing. It's just positive things that people can help each other and then somebody are probably <laughs> much better persons making a contribution to Debian. They should be the leading that part of the, the, the branch of the project. So we have to be too strict on how to do this. You exclude yeah. people that can't contribute. So to put this together, you have yeah, to think this about is it. A Thank also you. a different issue here. We want to have, this, we are talking about the process that gets people uh, into the Debian keyring and um, gets them access to projects machines. So that's really the, the process we are talking about. Um, I think B. Dale had a question, a comment, or? Yes. There are, here. Ah, okay, uh, you too, okay, but. Um, there have been several concerns about allowing too many people in Debian and the risk of lowering the quality by Position was to uh, that we have a lot of people helping, and we want them into Debian as, as fast as possible, and that we well need a way to get people in. Or yeah, this is uh, how the the precise process works was discussed this morning. So I'm not going to repeat this. At all. I think we are running out of time really, really now. So be there. I just wanted to comment that when Manoj asked the question earlier about do we want this to be the best technical distribution or a social club, to me the answer is completely and unequivocal, it's completely obvious what the answer is, and that is that we're trying to create the best distribution. The extent to which people are willing to sponsor events like this one and other things which help to improve our social interactions or as developers are entirely because we understand that these sorts of activities are crucial for helping people to be more productive and working together, not because there's any desire on anybody's part to provide sponsorship for free vacations to strange and exotic places or things like this. I think it's important for all of us to remember this. It is really pretty fundamental. And when we're thinking about all of this stuff, while I am completely in favor of finding ways to recognize and to thank people who provide contributions to the project in ways other than fixing RC bugs, we really have to stay focused on what the core objective of the Debian project and the surrounding community should right. be. 
Simon? I think sort of to sum up the discussion here, um, what, what I've noticed from all of these comments is we don't actually know why we want to change the new maintainer process. We haven't figured out like what requirements are, like who, who, what kind of people are we trying to get into Debian? Like because yes, it, it is a good idea to get people who are, who, who are good at working with one another, who we can all work well with, as well as uh, be of a high technical caliber, but which kinds of people are we selecting? And, and this is why we have all, all, all of this discussion because I don't think we all agree on the type of people we want coming into Debian. We have to figure out that before we can actually design a proper new maintainer process. Um, thank you. Um, I got, I got okay. another point. Okay, how many time do we have left? None? None. Minus more than Christoph? Okay, um, well, it's lunchtime, so. <laughs> At the ground of. One last remark. I'm interested in your opinion on whether this is a good proposal or not. So can we just yeah. make a, a quick poll? Who thinks this proposal, like what Christoph said, is good? Just what we have now, of course, or who thinks this should be implemented in some way uh, similar to this? Raise your hands. <coughs> who thinks so it's about ten, ten people? people um, who thinks it's not a good idea? About uh, about the same, yes. Uh, who has um, other plans or would? No opinion. So uh, everyone who has um, remarks that have not been addressed in the discussion and wants to uh, has an idea of a different scheme, which which we should do, um, should please talk to me or AJ and so we can see what we can do here. So, um, well, I think thanks for coming and we are all for lunch now.